lot of people have attitude issues. They don't know that they're wrong. Some people are like, ah, oh, I took a small loss. That sucked, today sucks. No, small losses are good. What's up, Tim Sykes here, millionaire mentor trader, doing this video literally right before I have to go to bed. It's after midnight, I gotta get up early tomorrow giving a live webinar to my challenge students. If you click the link below and apply for my challenge, you get access to two, three, sometimes four live webinars every single week and all the archive webinars. If you don't like my voice, if you don't like me, all my top students have given webinars too. Tim Grittani especially, in an industry where 90% plus of traders lose, Tim Grittani has made 13 million, starting with just $1,500. Totally atypical, totally an aberration, but you should learn from his whole journey because it wasn't on any one trade, it's thousands and thousands of trades. And he has over six dozen archive webinars for challenge students. That's just one of my top students. Jack Kellogg, he gave an amazing two and a half hour webinar too. These are just a few examples. Why am I doing this at midnight? Because there is literally no time during the day. <laughs> I'm trading, I'm giving commentary, I'm writing blog posts, I'm doing other videos. You'd be shocked at what my day looks like. I'm not complaining, I just want you to understand why I'm like exhausted. I'm like slurring my words, I'm not drunk, I'm just tired. Um, Mariana, my first female millionaire student, she's only 20, she crossed over 1.1 million. There's not that many hot plays right now. I'm always checking in on my students. Um, when they're not trading that much, I'm like, are you staying safe? And she messaged me and she's like, actually I lost 30 grand today. That's her biggest loss ever. And understand, she's very conservative. Um, you know, she was losing, like, I think her biggest loss previously was like five or 10,000. So she just blew her biggest loss out of the water. Um, I believe it was on IMMP. We're messaging, she's like, how many burpees do you want me to do? I told her 145 burpees. I assign burpees to my students when they're bad because I want them A, to be physically fit, and B, I want them to remember that. And she was like, oh, only 145? I would have expected worse. She has the right attitude. Like she literally asked for like a punishment, like how many burpees do I need to do? She knew she did wrong. The re part of the reason why I give out burpees like in the, the challenge chat or in the chat room is a lot of people have attitude issues. They don't know that they're wrong. Some people are like, ah, oh, I took a small loss. That sucked, today sucks. No, small losses are good. And I would assign that person burpees. Sometimes people say like, oh, I'm, I'm so right. I just went all in. Right when they say all in, I assign them burpees because I don't care how the stock acts. You should never go all in. You should never use leverage. Any one play can be destructive, like complete, utter devastation for your account and your confidence and your future, okay? You're probably not gonna make any one great trade in your lifetime that's gonna set you up for life, but one time where you get too cocky, too over aggressive, all it takes is one trade to blow you out of the water. I know many gunslingers who say, Tim, you trade too conservatively, you teach too conservatively, I found a better way. They never find a better way. Maybe in certain markets, maybe with certain sectors or certain plays, they can make more than me. Very often, I underestimate a lot of these plays. If you ever wonder, what am I gonna do? I'll probably take the safe route because um, I've just seen too much crazy stuff over the past two decades. So I'm interested to see what Mariana um, is gonna say about her $30,000 loss. She'll probably include that in her monthly recaps. You know, this is why I'm so proud of my top students, not just for the money that they make, but they develop good habits, they're transparent, and you know, that's frankly how I want more students to be. So that's why she didn't get that many burpees. If it was somebody who was undisciplined, and they're like, I went all in and I lost 30 grand, I would give that person more burpees. But I know Mariana has over a million dollars in profits. 30 grand definitely stinks. I mean, it's her worst loss ever, but she handled it like a pro, right? She's, she's like, I know I did wrong, stupid mistake. I mean, just in the message. I don't know all the details yet, but my point is, is that attitude matters, discipline matters. I'm sorry for Mariana, I'm not trying to make her feel bad about her loss, she probably is being hard enough on herself. Again, I made a million dollars in my early 20s. I remember how I had no mentor, no guide. Um, I became a philosophy major because my head was so messed up because I just didn't understand like all this money. I'm from a middle class town in Connecticut. Jack Kellogg is also from a middle class town in Connecticut. It's actually pretty crazy. I really think that 
you know, I said this to, to one of my former uh, millionaire students, Stephen Ducks. I was like, you know, I, I think, because he, he watched all the DVDs, like, you know, he, he literally knew all my rules and patterns. And I was like, I think that, you know, I might've cloned you in the future and then sent you back in time to be one of my millionaire students. I think that might be the case with Mariana or Jack or Tim Grittani. It, it would make sense, you know, if cloning is possible in the future and I do get rich enough, you know, theoretically I could go back in time or send a student back in time to be an amazing student. I have no idea if that really is the, the case or if I'm just finally getting through to more students. Um, that would be beautiful too. It doesn't have to be some, some sci-fi cloning conspiracy theory. Um, Mariana will make it back. She'll get through this because she has her habits down, her process down, but I'm gonna stay on her. And I'm gonna stay on Jack and Kyle and Matt and anybody who starts to get a little sloppy with their executions, they get a little cocky. Trading is very fragile. It doesn't matter how much money you made. Somebody tweeted at me and they're like, they don't need your help anymore. Yes, they do, you know? And even if they don't want it, I'm gonna give it because I recognize the signs. This is the beauty of having achieved pretty much what they've achieved, you know, now 20 plus years later. Again, 90% plus the traders lose. So before you're thinking like, I wanna be your next millionaire student, I wanna be spoiled, you probably won't be. I'm just gonna be real with you. Most people don't have the work ethic required to study 10, 12, 15, 17 hours a day, every single day while making nothing. And sometimes getting a gut punch, like a $30,000 loss. You know, Jack and Kyle also lost big trying to uh, dip by MMNFF a few weeks ago. Um, Kyle had his biggest loss. I think it was like 70 or 80,000, but he's at like 1.5 million. Um, and Jack, I think lost like, uh, like two or 300,000 on that one trade. Um, but he made it all back already. So having good habits really helps, but even my best students, even myself, sometimes we can get undisciplined. Um, so trading is very fragile. Leave a comment below, say that. Trading is very fragile. It's not like you get paid consistently. Kyle actually tweeted this. Um, I'll have Pascal find this tweet. Say hi, Pascal. Hey, everybody. I gotta pass out in a little bit, but Kyle did this tweet where he was saying like, you know, wanting to be consistent obviously like that's a natural human tendency like you want security if you get a job it's like how much do i get paid weekly or bi-weekly or bi-monthly or monthly or yearly um trading you might do very well for a little bit and then nothing if you start to try to normalize it and make like a certain dollar amount every day every week every month it's going to end badly i told all these guys back in the year 2000 i made over 700 grand in the first four months of the year when the nasdaq was spiking so much the Nasdaq crashed later in 2020. For the last eight months of the year, I lost 10 grand while I was experimenting with new strategies, new patterns. It forced me to learn short selling. Successful trading is not all about how much money you can make right away. It's trying to capitalize on whatever opportunities there are, whether they're long or short. Right now, I don't think it's good to go short. But capitalizing on bubbles, learning from slower markets, learning from your mistakes, learning from what you do wrong, and it gradually builds up and theoretically should get easier over time. Once you start learning, okay, I remember this trade. Okay, this is a trade. I don't do well in this setup. Okay, I have experience with this. I'm not really sure. When in doubt, get out. Sometimes the best trade is no trade at all. You start to really know yourself. And that's why I'm so proud of Mariana. Unlike the promoters who just say you should never have any losses and they're full of crap because every great trader has losses. Mariana knows about her loss. She's already basically, you know, was asking for punishment. She's like basically saying like she messed up. She needs, you know, to, to recognize that she messed up, but she already does. That's the beautiful thing. My top students are so prepared and I'm very honored um, to be part of that preparation. The challenge that I'm linking below, you get access to me, Jack, Kyle, Matt Monaco, Mariana, Michael Good, Mark Crook, Roland, all these guys and now girls are in the challenge chat. It's a separate chat room and they get two, three, four live webinars a week. All of that speeds up your learning curve. So it's up to you to learn. It's up to you to study. I can't study for you. I'm just here to give lessons. Um, if I can help in any way, you let me know. Leave a comment below if you're gonna be dedicated and if you understand that trading is fragile. Trading profits is fragile. You can never get too cocky. You can never get too aggressive. Otherwise, the market will humble you. Stay humble, Mariana. Everybody else, let's see what you got.